What do you make of this first uh, preparatory week that uh, Trump has put in place with these appointments that are coming out? Well, if you remember the expression, the Reagan revolution, which was tantamount in people's minds in 1981, we are now in the middle of the Trump revolution. He is going to remake the American government, whether it is with a Department of Government Efficiency led by Elon Musk and Ramaswamy, whether it is by the nature of his nominees. This is Donald Trump's game, and he is going to play it the way he wants. Uh, you mentioned Ramaswamy and you mentioned Musk. They both strike me. They're tech bro people. Uh, Musk has existing government contracts that are enormous. I mean, the, the SpaceX relationship, um, the the X relationship, the Twitter Twitter relationship, and even some relationships with, with, with other technologies that Musk uh, is um, – in a connection with with the American government. He had, in other words, he has co contracts with them. Uh, now he's in that same government, and he's called upon to get rid of efficiencies and get, get rid of inefficiencies and uh, explore further efficiencies. Explain to me the complexity of that role, a guy like Musk with existing contracts with the U.S. government. There, there is no formal appointment process. Donald Trump is setting up his own independent commission just like the Grace Commission, which was during the uh, Reagan years. Uh, and this is how Donald Trump is going to govern. He won. He won overwhelmingly. Uh, he won the popular vote. He won the electoral vote. He controls both houses of Congress. He has fealty from both the new Senate Majority Leader, Senator Thune, and also from the Speaker of the House, uh, Speaker Johnson. And he believes that the Supreme Court is in his hands as well. So for Donald Trump, there are no restraints. There is no effort. Now, let me just point out to you that one of the things Donald Trump wanted was for the Senate to suspend the confirmation process and allow for recess appointments, which goes around the whole question of going through hearings. That, by the way, is what John Bolton uh, experienced when he was ambassador to the United Nations. There was no hearing. He got a recess appointment. That is what Donald Trump is doing. And I can't emphasize this enough. This is like a wheel with a spoke in the middle who makes all the moves, and that's Donald Trump. Let me assure you the difference between now and eight years ago is that Trump now understands the levers of power, and he's going to exercise them. And that's why I believe this is the Trump revolution. Well, the Trump revolution may mean a lot. Of, by the way, it's the hub, the hub would be in the center of the wheel, John, and the spokes would come out of the hub. Let's get our uh, let's get our goddamn Thank you very references much. straight. All right, uh, now um, I the, spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's our Rothman. That's our Rothman. Um, John, when you talk about uh, Trump's vision of government, now we've heard a lot of of, of stuff on this, and so. Uh, I don't know if Trump's vision of government is a, a really a coherent one. I mean, he's got a lot of slogans and he's got a presidency, I think, based on sloganeering. But I'm wondering what his real underpinning philosophy is. I mean, is it the Bannon philosophy of wanting to deconstruct essentially the administrative state, all those regulatory agencies yes, from EPA to consumer? Yeah, okay. But look, Donald Trump was president for four years. He understands what he experienced, and he is determined to make sure that in this administration, he's in charge. And trust me when I tell you this, I'm watching Donald Trump carefully, but there are no restraints on Donald Trump, none at this moment. Yeah, he does have great political capital, John, so he can do almost anything he wants to do. And of course, that is correct. Yeah, Supreme Court's given him all that that additional running room. Uh, questions for John Rothman are already coming in. I will grab one of them now. Uh, somebody trolling you. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's interesting. I didn't even remember what Rothman's prognostication was on this. Uh, People's Republic of Santa Monica says Rothman's such a great progno prognosticator on the election results. Did you? What was your prognostication? I don't even remember what it was. You I said we were in a very tight race. I agreed with the pollsters. And I said last week on your program or two weeks ago, it depends on who turns out. If right. the Trump people turned out, 
he would win. And one of the things we learned in this election is that women did not turn out in large numbers. Millions of Californians did not vote in this election. And the Trump people were highly motivated. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm not claiming to be right or wrong. I'm only saying I really believed it would be a close election. And I think I referred to my son, Joel, who informed me before the election that Trump was going to win. And I said, why do you think that? He said, all my friends are voting for Trump. You know, you said that uh, he's won an over, in an overwhelming way or a dominant fashion. Um, I, I get why you said that, and I get that he won the popular vote. But let's face it, it, it was razor thin still. I think the whole thing came down to 175,000. We can go I'm, back yeah. and talk about razor thin. He will be the president. He I will make the appointments, and he has the votes in the Senate and the House to do pretty much what he wants. No one is going to oppose him. I think it's the second part of what you said that's the most, uh, uh, I I think, the most uh, important, which is that he's got the he's got he's got a congressional backing now that, you know, he will allow him to do whatever he wants. Wouldn't that be even more significant than were he just to be elected? And the interesting thing is the three key contenders for the nomination uh, for the leadership of the Republicans all were willing to give him carte blanche. There was a time when no senator, self-respecting senator, would have agreed to yield the confirmation process. Yet all three contenders for the leadership said they would. Cronin, uh, Senator Thune, who won, and of course, uh, Senator uh, Scott of Florida. All were willing to cede that responsibility. It is astounding to me. That's all I can tell you. Uh, This from uh, BW Rock with a $10 super chat. 2025 word of the year, cacistocracy, which a cacistocracy is a government run by the worst, least qualified, or most unscrupulous citizens. As you see this Trump government unfolding, is it a cacistocracy, John Rothman? It is Trump's government. That means that in two years during the midterms, the American people will judge the success or failure of Donald Trump. He is going to claim full credit. And let me explain to you, he deserves it. No one expected this kind of monumental triumph. And let me point out to you, you can slice it and dice it. He's in control. And may I point out as well, when it comes to judicial nominations, he will have the Senate. And if there are vacancies on the courts, whether it is the Supreme Court or the federal courts or the appellate courts, He will have the votes to confirm the people that he wants. Loyalty is critical to him. He's said it over the years many times, and no one should doubt that that is Donald Trump's modus vivendi. Uh, Next question. Next question relates to something you just talked about, which is the courts. Joe Biden is still president, and the Democrats still control the Senate. What's happening with these judicial appointments? They have a period during which they, apparently there are 30 judicial appointments I was reading the other day that are still kind of waiting to get into the pipeline. And and let me tell you, Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer until January 3rd. And remember, the presidential term doesn't expire until January 20th, but Congress shifts on January 3rd. So Chuck Schumer, as the Senate majority leader, is going to do everything he can between now and January 3rd to get those nominations through. The Republicans will resist, but he has the votes. So he is going to do everything. Because oh, of course. I'm, all right, no all right. question. I mean, I'm, so, so, all right, I'm hoping to see that, uh, evidence of that. You don't, ahead, have to, you don't have to hope. He has said they're going to get these judicial nominations through, period. Okay. Kim? I, have, I heard two things, and I can't confirm them, but I heard, one, that Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court justice, might be considering stepping down. He's older now, but he wouldn't do it. He's in his late seventies and there would be no reason for him to step down. He in fact feels completely vindicated. And if he steps down when Trump becomes president, someone like Thomas will replace him. There were also rumblings of health issues for justice Sotomayor. And now she she can't step down. She's got to stay in now, right? Yep. She has diabetes. She is, uh, not going to step down. If she did, I don't believe they could force through a confirmation between now and the new Congress. Oh, so you're saying they were kind of 
hamstrung just by timing in this case. Absolutely. And yeah. look, let me point out to you that Mr. Smith chose to resign rather than be fired, but he is obligated to write a report. Will the Republicans bury that report? I can't tell you. Phineas says, Mark, ask Rothman about the progro- the pogroms in Amsterdam. What is happening in Amsterdam, John Rothman? Uh, the hatred of Jews is monumental. I must tell you, I was shaken to my core. I was in Amsterdam three months ago, a liberal, tolerant city. The Jews of Amsterdam are terrified. By the way, this is now spreading to Sweden, where they're also having incidents. Uh, and it was a pogrom, an assault on Jews directed at Jews because they are Jews. And I talked to a friend of mine, a Jew who lives in Amsterdam. They are terrified. May I also indicate to you that uh, America is pro-Israel. But let me point out that the uh, new lineup that Donald Trump is putting in place, including uh, Governor Mike Huckabee, who will be ambassador, are very, very, very pro-Israel. They are in line with the Netanyahu philosophy. Uh, It will mean a tremendous change in America's approach to Israel. And I believe that you will find that if Marco Rubio becomes Secretary of State, certainly with uh, John Ratcliffe at the CIA, um, that there is no doubt that in Israel there was general rejoicing, not over Trump's domestic policy, but over his commitment to Israel. Remember that in this country, Jews overwhelmingly voted for Harris, about 78%, I believe, the latest number I heard. But in the traditional community in New York, Trump made major gains. He was recognized for his accomplishment in moving the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, his recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, his statements clearly that Jewish settlement in the West Bank is legal, and all of these, and his aggressive stance on Iran, declaring again before the election that Iran will never be allowed to have a nuclear weapon. Uh, For Benjamin Netanyahu, who is under a lot of political pressure, the victory of Donald Trump was a uh, major accomplishment in terms of his policy direction. So these are things we're going to watch carefully. Remember that the Saudi crown prince was in Iran. They are traditionally enemies, but he is banking on backing Iran in all of this. So we'll have to see how this all sorts out. But uh, I'll be speaking tonight on the new American approach to the Middle East. It is a profoundly different approach than Joe Biden's. Let me be clear. Joe Biden calls himself a Zionist, is pro-Israel, no question about it. But Trump is emphatically going to work with Benjamin Netanyahu in a positive, constructive way in their uh, way of doing things in the Middle East. Well, positive, constructive way. I mean, you've got radical guys. You know, their notion of positivity may not jive with general notions. Do you understand that our view, and I say this because most of us supported Kamala Harris, most of us opposed Donald Trump, our view did not prevail in the election. And certainly, Donald Trump is not in the mainstream of San Francisco thinking for sure. Let me explain, Mark. I am deeply troubled by what is happening with Donald Trump. Make no mistake. But I also understand that that is how the American process works. A new administration is able to define policy and direction, sometimes against the establishment, if you will. I predict that there will be more and more comment on the Middle East. And if you go back and you take a look at Mike Huckabee's record, you will understand why. Mark uh, Daniel says, I, oh, I remember this now. Daniel Zachary says, Mark, I love your show. Quick question for John Rothman today. Does he still believe and have confidence in the American people? Remember, John, how you said, and you and I disagreed about this. I told you I didn't have confidence in the American people. You said, I've got confidence in the American people that they're going to make the right choice. Uh, I, he's asking, do you change your position now? You still have confidence? Yes. I believe the American people make a decision. <laughs> And they can recognize error. But in the meantime, Donald Trump will be judged in the midterms on what he accomplishes. And Donald Trump is determined. He already knows he's a lame duck. But he has two years to push through what he wants. He's going to do it. By the way, you've not mentioned J.D. Vance. Let me be very clear about this. 
J.D. Vance is in the position of very likely succeeding Donald Trump in control of the Republican Party. We have not exa examined J.D. Vance to the extent that we need to look at him. But I can tell you he is going to be a key player in everything that happens in this administration. Well, that's of great concern. Take a glass of water while I read you this one. Uh, this is uh, Brian who says, uh, please ask John how bad is this going to be and whether we will still be intact enough in two years knowing all of his moves will be disasters. Will we be able to turn this mess around, asked Brian Reich. The answer is what I discussed with my children. The American system will prevail. We have guardrails. And also we have, we have people in positions who understand. Let me tell you what I am concerned about. Have you heard about the Warrior Board? This is a new committee being set up by Donald Trump to eliminate generals, four- and three-star generals, who are not in sympathy with what he's doing. In the Pentagon itself, there is a major concern and reformation taking place. The question of how the American military will be used. By the way, I'm going to watch carefully. You know that Donald Trump threatened to bring General Milley back to the service after he retired for the purpose of establishing a court-martial. Yeah. So I'm waiting to see how, whether or not Donald Trump fulfills I, I, those I, I kinds have, of comments. I have trouble uh, understanding how those two things can coexist. The notions that you've just offered, which are associated with these um, military tribunals that may be impaneled and bringing Melly back and uh, this kind of... Uh, mass, mass expulsions. Mass expulsions, a exactly, a cleansing of the administration of anyone who doesn't pass the loyalty test, et cetera. And then, but you, you preceded it by saying, you know, I do still have faith there are guardrails in place. I I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble finding those guardrails now, John. Okay, let me explain. If I did not have faith in the American system, I would be in complete despair. We survived Richard Nixon. We survived Iran-Contra. We've survived many difficult moments. I have to believe. Look, uh, I love this country, and I want this country to survive and prosper. And Donald Trump has won an election fairly and democratically. By the way, you'll note there was no statement of any kind that fraud was committed in this election. Uh, and so you've got to have faith. Otherwise, what are we here for? You know, we just be in despair. I won't. I won't live in despair. Well, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if it's despair. I don't know if it's a, the only option. But I understand why you, why you say it. Uh, Elon's first efficiency report: uh, "quote It will be the most efficient if you turn total control over to me." <laughs> Seriously, Skynet is just a nickname. I am not a bot. Yeah, the, it is true, John, that this uh, the tech bro invasion is is pretty wild. And it's what they terrifying. Have, yeah, it's terrifying. Running a business is not the same as running the government. And when you talk about major changes in the Pentagon, look, we now have a nominee, uh, Mr. Heggeth, yeah. to be the Hegseth. Secretary right. of Defense. He has no experience running a major operation. And let me tell you, that is what the Pentagon is. It's uh, huge. Hexeth, it's immense. He Hexeth, as the nominee, is astounding to me. It made sense when John F. Kennedy put a Republican, uh, McNamara, uh, who had experience uh, with the Ford Motor Company, in a position of being Secretary of Defense. But... This is all stuff that's going to have to be vetted, and the American people have now cast their lot with Donald Trump. For two years, we are going to have to watch carefully, and frankly, given his control of Congress, there is very little we'll be able to do for those of us in opposition. Well, I mean, I don't is... want to paint a dark picture, Mark, but I want to paint a realistic <laughs> picture. No, I get it. it and and it's realistically dark. I I, I get it. Um, uh, finally, I mean, this is from uh, No Contendo, who says, uh, Keith Overman on Monday covered the La Civita Lewandowski thing, uh, putting up print uh, hit with Lewandowski um, 
putting out a print hit on La, La Civita, but he squashed it. La Civita said, quote, I will destroy you. So internal conflicts are already existing in this Trump administration. Wilds is going to get dragged in. Susie Wilds, she's the, uh, as you know, the chief of staff. And uh, um, I'm, I'm also of the thought, John, that you know, this town ain't big enough for both of us is going to be something that we're going to see a lot that of in this Trump case. administration. And in the end, Mark, who is the final arbiter? Donald Trump. Nobody else will make these decisions. Donald Trump is in complete control, and therefore, he will be held accountable, whether he succeeds or fails. And remember that Trump, this morning, and you have the picture up there now, had a meeting with Joe Biden. It was respectful. And what was Joe Biden trying to emphasize? The peaceful transfer of power, which happened four years ago, despite Donald Trump. Uh, so, Randy, Randy says, I'm surprised Trump didn't ask Biden to kneel to him when they met. Trump is entirely know, it, classless. I mean, it is true, John. He hasn't pursued this with any kind of sense of decorum. No, but it's, Trump. It, that's part of the problem of Donald Trump. So I believe strongly that the American people after January 6th would never turn to Donald Trump again. And they have. And what do you do in a democracy? You accept the judgment of the people, even if you believe that judgment is wrong. Yeah. Uh, John, I'll recommend your podcast again, Around the Political World with John Rothman. It's a daily offering, and you can get John's reflections on everything going on. I think, as I said to you in the first hour, there is so much going on. I encourage you to listen and not to check out. So No, uh, no absolutely. And Mark, I will be with you next week, but I want to alert you to the fact that the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I will not be available. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that now. But look, people ask me, am I in despair? The answer is no. I am eternally optimistic. I have hope. And one of the things that you do and I do is to provide that forum for people to participate in the discussion. So I'm not in despair. I have to believe because if I don't, I really would be lost. Yeah, there you go. Hi, it's Mark. And I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.